if we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All council members are present, minus Councilman Collison. He did notify me that um, he had a family issue to deal with and would be absent. Uh, Ms. Wood, I'm assuming we have an amendment, do we not? Yes, good evening, Mayor Johnson and Council. Uh, we do have an amendment to the agenda, which is to add on um, an amendment to the joint powers agreement with the Isani Fire District. Um, Councillor Lundin may be able to speak on this item, but staff is recommending that this be a business item be added. And it would be J8, Mayor. Okay. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda with the amendment? Make a motion to adopt. Second. I have a motion to adopt the agenda with the amendment from Councilman Lundeen and a second by Councilman Burgley. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 4-0. Do I have a motion to approve the City Council minutes? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve second. by Councilman Burgley and a second by Councilman Lundeen. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 4-0. Announcements, Committee of a Whole will be Tuesday, December 19th, 2019. City Council meeting, Tuesday, December 19th at 7 p.m. I'm sorry, I didn't say the Committee of a Whole is 5 p.m. on Tuesday, December 19th. Uh, the Council meeting will be right after that on Tuesday, December 19th at 7 p.m. And the Planning Commission will immediately follow the Council meeting. <coughs> Any Council Committee reports? I'll just make a little note on the, the joint powers agreement. This is something that we've been hashing out for months. Um, I know this has gone in front of our city attorney and he had found a statue that wasn't correctly numbered and that was corrected. And they also, the board wanted it to go to five uh, to make a quorum instead of three. And if that's all we got to do to hold this back, so be it. So be it. Just kind of a brief summary of what this is, is the joint powers agreement is giving the fire district the ability to charge for calls and runs and so forth and so on. It's not changing our agreement with the, with the district, other than the fact that it's giving the fire district the ability to bill for calls it was my understanding that all this was already in place anyway they just had a uh, one document with a bazillion amendments that they've just now put in one document yep period correct and the fee schedule will be another debate so this is all this is, we, we got to cross this hurdle before we can go to the next one and this needs to get done sooner than later so it's very urgent that we move forward on this as soon as possible. So, so when we get to that, we can discuss it further, but just so you got a brief summary of what's going on on it. All right. No one else? All right, moving on to business items. Uh, J1, resolution, a compliance updates for personnel policy. Ms. Wood. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so we have a complete rewrite of the personnel policy to be all in compliance with state and federal law. Our uh, personnel policy had not gone through a full update since it was created, and I believe it was 2007 or 8 from the initial draft. There's been minor revisions throughout the time of adding or changing or deleting, however, not actual full rewrite. So staff has completed that. That was one of the goals set as at the 2019 goal setting meeting at the beginning of the year in January. There are no major significant changes, just updating. These were by recommendations and also reviewed by the League of Minnesota Cities and the city attorneys. Which my understanding from our city attorney can probably contest that he went through this line by line with the League of Minnesota. So we know this is pretty tight knit. His associates did as well. We had um, Mr. Attorney Sullivan working on it. 
I make a motion approve. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Lundeen to approve and a second by Councilman Bergley. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 4-0. All right, moving on to the, the juicy part, Mr. Becker. I hope you're ready. Uh, considering amendments to city code and 2020 fee schedule, uh, ordinance amending city code chapter 160 fees. Do you want to <coughs> touch base on both of these, Mr. Becker, or do you want to go single? It, it, we could, I mean, council can address it in whatever order, um, but ultimately both are tied to updating the fee schedule for budget year 2020. Okay, the other was a resolution adopting fees within the city of Isani. If you'd like to take that away, Mr. Becker. Um, basically, the, uh, in the memo attached, uh, based on the discussions at the last committee of the whole, um, we've got uh, a few revisions under administration. Um, uh, we've removed a few items, uh, agenda packet subscription, agenda subscription, and uh, open burning permit. Um, I remind everybody that you would still need to get an open burning permit, but there would no longer be a charge for it. Um, then we've updated the, um, the cost for uh, water meters based on uh, 2020 quote. And um, it's also a reminder to council that the uh, utility rates will go up 3% uh, per city code. Um, that uh, has been in place since our last um, rate study in 2015, I believe it is. And so that's, uh, that's part of that as well. We'll do these um, one at a time here, gentlemen. So if I have a... Can we have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Well, um, Mr. Becker, I'm just curious about uh, J2A. Um, and those administration things, were those things replaced or just put into one thing where it says administration and it says agenda packet subscription and it's crossed out agenda subscription crossed out and open burning crossed out and then you just talked about open burning you know what i'm talking about can you see that there yeah yep those are items that are simply removed if there's no fee associated then we don't list them in the fee within the fee schedule okay so there are no fees with that correct okay that was the one that we we discussed at committee of a whole that we can do it electronically okay. it's just a simple click it, it probably ended up in the fee schedule Copy many paste. years ago where if somebody wanted to get the agenda packet for each meeting, it might mean printing two or 300 pages a pop. And over the course of the year, a fee made, made, made good sense probably. But now if somebody wanted that packet, we would simply email it to them. Oh, that okay. takes almost no time at all. Oh, yeah, I remember this. So it so. doesn't make a lot of sense to charge so much money for that. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion on either of those items? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Councilman Bergley. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Councilman Gordon. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 4 0. Resolution adopting the 2020 final budget. Mr. Becker. Did we have to vote on B, or is that considered A and B both and two? That, that's both of them we just can okay. consider it in one. Now we moved on to three, which I believe he has a slideshow. <laughs> Mayor, Council. Thank you for having me here this evening. Um, We've got a number of resolutions associated with the budget. I'll go through the presentation. If you'd like to go through the resolutions one by one and ask any additional questions on, feel free. If you want to scoop them all up, that's that's fine too. Just make sure that we're just to make sure that we're clear on how that's being approached. Um, so tonight we're here to talk about the final 2020 budget and uh, and the final 2020 levy. Start with a little reminder on, on, on the, the basics of, of the budget. Um, components for, for somebody who doesn't know or even for those who do know but maybe would benefit from a refresher. Components of a municipal budget um, fall into four broad categories. Uh, one being operating revenues and expenses. Um, 
another being intergovernmental revenues and expenses, third being capital projects, and fourth being capital maintenance and replacement. Um, on the side, you can see the, the, the revenues that make up each of those categories um, and the expenses. Um, the reason I put this in is um, just to give that basic understanding, but also to understand where um, the city of Santee's competitive advantage might be. Um, I would argue that for most municipalities, uh, managing operating expenses and revenues is relatively easy. S some basic competency can have you do well in that area. Um, doesn't mean you will do well, but it, it's, it's not particularly hard. Um, regarding intergovernmental revenues, this would be things like um, being compliant with state statute in order to receive your LGA um, or um, state construction aid. Um, there might be other grant funding that would come from the federal government. Those types of things, really being competent on that is actually pretty easy. Because if you aren't, the state or federal government will hound you and they will make you compliant. That's not particularly difficult. Um, capital projects, um, that'd be things like um, a new water tower, street reconstruction, um, big projects. Think the kind of project that requires an engineer, right? If it requires an engineer, it's, it's most certainly falling into this category. Um, there again, um, most cities are going to be competent in this area simply based on paying a city engineer, right? They're going to pay an engineer, they're going to have, um, you know, at that particular firm, dozens if not, you know, a hundred or more professionals that are going to make certain that you are identifying the right projects in the right order um, and, and helping you get that together. What I think is most important uh, for, for any city, but a city of Isanti as well, is the capital maintenance and replacement. In my experience, um, most cities don't do this particularly well. Capital maintenance and replacement is those large budget items that are not annual in nature, uh, but do recur with some understandable regularity, maybe every 15 years or every seven years or something of that nature. Um, but most cities will, at best, put together a five-year plan um, and often are not very good at, they often don't do a very good job at identifying the funding. Um, this budget puts together a 20-year plan and in, 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 in my opinion properly recognizes um, the revenues associated with that. Um, the other part of the plan that we've put together for the 20-year for capital maintenance and replacement um, is that it takes the highs and the lows out of the expenditures. In that, year, in that plan there might be some years where the city may spend 200000 for example on a plow truck. Um, but in the next year, may have several purchases that all happen to line up in the same year and might cost the city 750000 Well, the, the, the obviousness there is, is that you don't want to set the levy based on the $200,000 purchase one year and the $700,000 purchase the next. It's better to take a cash flow analysis of the entire 20 years and identify what that consistent levy amount can be throughout the 20 years so that you don't have wild ups and downs, right? So it reduces the variability. I think that's where the marginal competitive advantage is because most, most cities just don't do the hard work of putting together a 20-year plan. Um, this is the first year I'm rolling it out and it's, I've been working on it since I started two and a half years ago. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of work, so. So what you're trying to do is instead of doing this in our budget, you're trying to even it out more, so. What, what my goal, what my aim is, is to identify as many aspects of the budget that we can that we have certainty about that we can levy even amounts over time. Amounts that stay steady or increase or decrease in small amounts. We do not want wild ups and downs. Um, going back to the, the capital projects, um, you know, right, the, the council's given direction that they would like to have a steady levy amount that at least for the foreseeable future precludes the need to issue bonds um, issuing bonds is not only expensive, but issuing bonds is also a great way to ensure that you're going to do this. Because as soon as that bond issue, um, the first year you levy on that bond issue, you're probably going up two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars, like that. Um, levying a steady amount over time um, allevi alleviates that concern, that variability, and uh, and moves us into a better place on that. And also, of course, saves us a lot of money on interest and issuance costs when when you would issue debt. Um, so those components come together um, to kind of make up the basics of, of fiscal management. Um, 
fiscal management, you're considering those components um, and the effect that they have on the budget individually. And the goal is ultimately successful fiscal management is small ups and downs, right? We want steady over time. I would argue that double digit increases or decreases are probably not good. I think that most residents, most business owners prefer and appreciate consistency and some measure of certainty in what they might be seeing in their tax bill in the coming years. Breaking the budget down into those basic components and applying a 20 year cash flow to the items that we can do that on helps to, helps to give us certainty, helps to reduce the risk of variability in that tax rate. Um, a little bit more on the fiscal management. Um, I've kind of touched on a lot of this, but on the operating and revenue um, expenses, you know, you're talking about things like staffing, um, parks and rec programming, uh, road maintenance, snow removal, police presence, how many patrols we're going to have, those types of questions, of fire protection, uh, those are the types of things that you see within that category. Um, capital projects, I've touched on this a little bit. Um, the only thing I maybe didn't touch on is when you, if we issue bonds for capital projects, which a lot of cities do, but not all, a lot of cities do, as a general rule, um, every million dollars you borrow, you're going to incur roughly $250,000 in, in, in interest and issuance costs. Um, I don't know, maybe to some people that seems like it's not a lot, maybe it is, whatever, but I can tell you 250000 bucks is about the cost of a new plow truck. I guess I'd rather spend that on a plow truck. Than, than interest, but um, yeah, we kind of we kind of touched on the other items on this. I think I will leave leave those uh, leave those alone. Uh, the other option, you know, the other only the last bullet on uh, capital maintenance and replacement it is important to note that within the twenty year plan, even though we've got everything in there from AV equipment in the council chambers to <coughs> plow trucks and squad cars to tuck pointing brickwork to replacing bathroom fixtures. I mean, we've got everything in that plan. We're trying to account for everything we can. Even though we have all those things in there, we have an identified useful life and then assigned it a year for replacement, um, that doesn't mean you automatically do it, right? The beauty of this plan and having um, this, these monies that are levied segregated into a separate fund is that if a plow truck doesn't make it to its 15 year useful life, you can slide that purchase forward and you don't have to drastically change things. Right? You don't have to give in to the variability within the tax rate. On the other hand, if you get to year 15 and you say, well, gee whiz, this plow truck is in great shape, you just push it back a year, reevaluate, and maybe you push it back again and again maybe. Um, but you can do that. This plan gives you that flexibility without having to worry about the wild, for, the wild fluctuations in the, in the tax rate and the levy. Um, some you consideration. Open questions along the way. Oh, absolutely! Please interrupt. So you mentioned two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a brand new plow truck. Um, ballpark. Yep. I'm asking, what's a ballpark? Cool. Uh, I'm just asking out of ignorance here. Um, do all cities buy brand new, or is, is used an option? I don't even know. The only time that I've seen um, a municipality buy used is smaller municipalities, especially townships. Okay. And it's often because they're looking to avoid um, a sudden change in the, in the tax rate of the levy. <coughs> that's generally how that, how that goes. Um, plow trucks are one of the items that are state bid. <coughs> so the state goes through all the leg work on an annual basis to identify what the, the bid price will be. Yeah. And uh, cities have that option to simply take that yeah. and not have to bid it out. Or in our case, uh, purchases over 10,000, we're gonna, we're gonna get bids anyway. Well, I just have to ask, because didn't we just buy a tanker or something from Cambridge? A water, water truck. Water yep. truck. And we got, yeah, used, but yeah. it was, I mean, everything in it's brand new. Yeah. We got a great deal on that thing. And so that we, doesn't happen very often, that type of thing? No. Okay. Yeah, it's a couple of years ago we bought a different plow truck, <coughs> but I think uh, Josie and Matt found that thing. It was a demo model. I think, wasn't that one plow truck, the last one we got, that was a demo model, so we got a heck of a deal on it? I don't recall the specifics, I don't. Yeah, but I think it was a demo model, and it, and we got, a, got a, a really good price on it. You know, demo model versus something used. I hate to tell you, I wouldn't want to buy a used vehicle for me, because it's used. Right. 
you know. It's well, all, I get that. I get that, but also yeah. there are good used vehicles out there that yeah. I don't have to buy from you to either. So yeah, I mean, I get. But well, a plow truck yeah. takes a lot of abuse. I, I bet. I would argue there are certain city functions where buying used is just fine, and there are other city functions where that would probably not be advised. Mm. So. Um, so in, uh, some considerations in setting the levy um, and how we approach this in the, in the multiple components. Um, one was capital project funding. Remember, these are the types of projects that require uh, engineering expertise. Um, we started levying for that, and the work on uh, 6th Ave will start in 2020, and we've got 10 years of projects lined up thereafter. Um, that starting list of, of 10 projects um, was originally identified back in 2010 and had originally been slated to, to start work in 2012. And... Um, you know, uh, funding had never been properly identified, and uh, now we're in a position that we have that funding identified, and we know how we're actually going to go forward and actually make those things happen. So uh, those projects will get, get underway. Um, capital maintenance and replacement funding, um, I touched on this earlier. Again, you're looking at the broad scope of everything that we can possibly surmise we would need to replace or maintain over a 20-year period and running a cash flow on that and making sure that the fund never goes negative but otherwise keeping that levy amount consistent year after year after year. Um, the other consideration is worth noting is that in the general fund, we've got um, well over $100,000 of repayments to um, enterprise funds uh, for a hotel project. Um, this is something we've laid out uh, before the council before. Um, the uh, Two of the repayments to water, sewer, and liquor are for 10-year uh, periods. The, the last one, the 53,000 repayment, um, 2020 will be the last budget year you'll see that. Um, that was regarding the land purchase. Uh, so we split that into just two sums. And so that'll disappear. So that'll be a, a savings in the 2021 budget that we'll see. Um, so we get to the proposed levy here um, for the council to consider this evening. Um, We've got uh, on the right, you've got 2019, and on the left, you've got uh, the 2020. Um, big thing to notice is we've got three um, levies that didn't, that were not levies in 2019 that are proposed to be levies in 2020. Um, the one is a capital maintenance levy, and again, these are general fund expenditures that we would count for in Fund 920. Again, this is that 20 year cash analysis uh, on, on what the levy needs to be. Uh, to maintain a, a steady, consistent levy over a number of years. Um, street reconstruction levy for four, Fund 425, um, same deal. Um, look at those projects. How can we cash flow those and not issue debt and, uh, and borrow, uh, uh, borrow money and, and pay out a quarter million dollars on every million borrowed? Um, so that, that amount of 267000 is uh, the starting point, and then we would just simply adjust that for inflation um, as needed. We'd, City engineer and I would review that annually and, and make sure those prices are, are still good. How, how long were those levies absent? Uh, the first year ever. We've, so never, we've it, never had capital maintenance levy or a street construction levy before. Never? No. The only time we would have ever levied for a street construction project, project would have been after debt had already been issued and the additional cost incurred. So how did we do street construction and maintenance before? Well, that's I mean, that, that's part of the uh, situation that we're in is, is the, right now the starting list of 10 years of projects. Um, you know, those are projects that were originally identified in 2010 and had been originally proposed to start in 2012 and simply never did. Um, you know, I've got some, some folks out there that have been waiting a fair number of years for their roads to get redone. And, uh, and this, this levy puts in place a proper funding mechanism to ensure that that happens. Um, EDA levy is a calculated amount that's just uh, from statute that's based on, the, um, based on the estimated market value. They give you a multiplier and you, you simply set it at that. That's your maximum. Uh, abatement levy, um, this is actually just goes to the general fund, but I, uh, I, Department of Revenue requires that you show it as a separate levy. Um, abatement levy is the amount of money that would go back to the hotel partners um, as part of that business subsidy. Um, I have to have to show that as a separate levy. Um, then below that, we have the debt service levy uh, in bold. And 
not in bold is the, the four numbers that make up that 369,000. Um, so that's that's a uh, debt service levy that is paying on on debt that's paying on money that we borrowed. Uh, total levy comes to um, just over 2.8 million compared to 2.4 in in 2019. And here, just to give you a history, we've got uh, 15 years um, plus the proposed year of the actual levy. So this is dollar amounts. Um, I'm not a. I mean, I. I Obviously, I have it in my presentation. I'm not a huge fan of tracking uh, the levy, per se, over time. I think the tax rate does a much better job giving a comparison between cities and between years, um, simply because as the market value rises and you have more residents, you're simply going to provide more services. You're simply going to levy more dollars. So this isn't a super helpful comparison. But nonetheless, um, to the extent that it has value, I did, I did put it in. But if you would have had those levies in place, say, 10 years ago, those bars would be more equal. Yeah, you, there would be less variability in that. Uh, yeah, in that so graph. there wouldn't be a, a high and a way low and a high and a way low. So, I mean, uh, yes, yeah, so the, the, the goal is, is slow increases or decreases, avoid double-digit increases or decreases. Um, Keep it consistent. Give residents and business owners some certainty and some reassurance that year to year um, they're not going to be surprised. Um, so to this, we are to the, um, the proposed tax rate, which is a number I, I prefer much more than just the straight levy amount. Um, tax rate for uh, 2019 was 61.82. Uh, the proposed tax rate for 2020 is 64.17. So that's a 3.8% increase. Um, actually, I'll, I'll touch on this a little bit later, but um, in September when we put forth the preliminary levy uh, and preliminary tax rate, um, we had it at 67.8 um, or a 9.7% increase. Um, since then, some things have changed. We brought that, uh, of course, we brought that to Committee of the Whole. Uh, the biggest thing that changed was we were able to find about one hundred seventy-two thousand dollars in savings in health healthcare costs, about one hundred fifty thousand of which benefited the, the general fund. Rough numbers. So that was a that was a that was a so, good deal. So we found money to save. We found savings. Yep. Versus stealing from Peter yep, to pay Paul. No, we didn't find any. Yeah, that's a, that's an important clarification. We did not find money. We found savings. Correct. There's a big, there's a big difference there. Yes, um, we found savings. We changed the. Um, the health care plan from uh, a co-op based in Sartell to a uh, public employee uh, insurance pool. And the rates were stunningly lower. I mean, just stunningly lower. Solid 50% less. It was quite amazing. And their cost history was uh, considerably better than the co-op had exhibited by a wide, wide margin. <coughs> so that was, a, that was a no-brainer, and it was, it, was, it was a good thing to get that done. Um, Another one, a good point of, for perspective here is, is that um, a tax rate is good for comparing cities and comparing over time. Um, so we've added some, some averages. Um, I did, took a five-year average. Uh, the tax rate has been 77.49 compared to the, the proposed of 64.17. And uh, if we go back 15 years, so that, of course this also would include the, the Great Recession where uh, there were some pretty severe budget cuts and the tax rate dipped quite a bit. Um, even over that time frame, the, the average tax rate is 68 and a half, so we're still still finding a way to stay below the average. And quite frankly, if, if you could continue year after year to stay below your five or, ten, five or 15 year averages, um, that means your tax rate's going down over time. Just, I think it was just a shocker just it to, it, it was a shocker to the residents to see uh, a 9.7% increase. Um, yep. I, I, I would, if I was a guessing man, I probably would guess that's why all these people are behind you today. That, that um, very well could be. Uh, but for them to see it's uh, not going to be 9.7, that it's in fact going to be 3.8, that's a six-point six decrease than what was preliminary thought. Uh, yeah. uh, as a taxpayer in the city, that's, that's as all of us as taxpayers in the city, that, that's huge. I know there's a... The county, excuse me, the county is also having 
from their projected is going to be lower than what their projected amount was also i can't speak on how much it is but i know it is substantially yeah. less not as much as this one was but our school board that isn't going to change yeah and and then i'm glad you bring that up you and i discussed this briefly before the meeting i, I think that a lot of times there's um I don't know, a misconception maybe about the preliminary budget meeting in September. Um, we're required by statute to certify a levy amount to the county auditor. We're required to do it. Um, and when we set that levy amount, the only thing that binds us after that meeting, the only thing that binds us is the levy can't be higher than that. You can rewrite the entire budget. You can rewrite every single line of the budget. You can lower the levy from that point 1%, 10%, whatever. Um, the only thing you can't do is you can't raise it from that point. Um, so I think, uh, I think oftentimes um, residents in, 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 the, in, in my years of experience, and even some council members, misunderstand um, what's really at stake at, at the preliminary budget meeting. It's, there's not too much that, not too much that's set in stone at, after that meeting. Mr. And Becker, I'm just trying to understand that average tax rate. That's not our average tax rate. That's no, that's a, that is ours. That's a city of my Santee standalone. Oh, okay. So the last four years we've averaged 77.49. So we've come down. It'd be a five-year average because that, that includes 19, which we're we're currently operating in. Yes. Okay. I, I was actually looking at the sheet that you have in your packet. Uh -huh. I, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead of you, Mr. Becker. That's I, I apologize if I do. I am. Um, but I, I noticed that in 2011, taxes were very low, like below 1%. But if you look at the last five years, they're up but, on the board. But in 2012, it jumped up 16.2%. Um, and, I, and I do have that slide in. We can, we can, get, we can get to that, too, for sure. And, and then I noticed in 2016, and remarkably, I'm like, geez, why does it keep spiking and lowering like this? And then it makes sense to me because I'm pretty newly elected official but those are election years actually so it lowered in an election year <coughs> and then it rose right after and it did that from 2011 up to 2019 hmm. and and you, you i circled it even on that sheet because i was like what is this so that that was kind of a shocker to me to see as a tax rate. We, I wouldn't want a 9% tax rate either, but when you look no. at our average tax rate over the last five years, it's at least come down, <coughs> you know, 13% from what it was. And another thing you got to keep in consideration, you know, in the last few years, property values have increased. And when your property values increases, your taxes are going to increase if, if even if we didn't raise our taxes, even if we kept it zero, your property v value went up, say ten thousand dollars. Your taxes are going to increase to reflect that ten thousand dollar increase. So you're going to have an increase, even if we left it at zero. You'd still get an increase because your property value is taxed higher. Yeah, that's a, that's a very important point. A lot of residents miss that is that if your property value doubles, say over fifteen years and the city of Isanti does not change its tax rate once in that 15 years, your taxes will have doubled because your market value doubled. People forget that, right? So if, if in this particular year, and I've seen a few statements already from, from residents, is, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if your market value went up 6%, even if we set the tax rate for no change, we, leave it, we have no increase, your taxes, city taxes will go up 6% because your market value went up 6%. I was explaining that to a gentleman the other day and was looking at his tax statement with him and, and he's a friend of mine so and he says what's going on with this and I explained it to him and I said first of all look your property was valued at $98,000 last year this year's it valued at 138,000 your taxes went up automatically no matter what just because your property value increased yeah. well, we had a gentleman that last time that sat in here and talked about that as well and it occurred to me that we've recommended people go to that, their county, they have a, they have, they have yep. a right to appeal to the county there. Which is in April, the, right? Yep, Board yeah. of Equalization, and that's generally in April. Some municipalities in certain years, you might see at the end of March or at the beginning of May, but Do you generally know that it's exact in the month date? of April. What's that? 
Do you know that exact date, the county one? I do not know for, for yeah. 2020. I don't know what that'll be. But, the, uh, yeah, but why yeah, would if, you If you wanted to uh, contest the value that you're seeing on your statement right now for taxes payable in 2020, that actually had to have, you had to have contested that back in April. Right. Um, my advice to residents is that if you feel like your value, you know, if your value has gone and changed 50 or 100 percent, some mind-blowing number, don't just let it go. If it was wrong before, it's going to be wrong in the future, go in April. It might not help you for taxes payable 2020, but still, go in April. Um, those, are, those are meetings where valuations really do get revised downward. That is a thing that really does happen. A lot of people have commented to me in the past that I would go, but I know it won't make any difference. I've been to those meetings. Trust me, that is a thing that really does happen. So. And as everybody knows, I mean, I campaigned on I didn't want to raise taxes, and I don't. Uh, I guess my question to you is, is are you going to get to why we have to raise them? There's, I mean, there's, a, there's a variety of reasons. The, you know, the clearest example is on the prior slide where we've got two levies that, um, that didn't exist before. That's the, that's the clearest you know, ability to see what has changed here is, is um, to have street projects identified and assigned years but never to have identified funding um, is a problem. Now, of course, that's, I mean, that's, that's a finance director thing. Uh, we have a bit of a revolving door, but now we've got a plan in place, and it's a plan that can sit there. Even if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, that plan is still there. Somebody can sit down and understand exactly what they need to be doing. Um, same with capital maintenance and replacement. Um, there was not a, a, a coherent plan in place. We did not have a full comprehensive list of all the things that all the departments in the city need over a 20-year period and understand exactly how are we going to pay for those things. It's one thing to say we need new squad cars or new plow trucks or a new water tower. It's an entirely different thing to say we need those things, we know we need them, and here's how we're actually going to pay for them. And here's how we're going to do it in the most fiscally responsible way possible. Debt is always an option. I would rather not issue debt. I'm going to use this for an example. The fire district just ordered a new fire truck. And a lot of people don't realize the fire department, the fire district has been running on vehicles that date back to 1977. And they, they put money in the CD and kept growing it. Then it started out on one CD and I believe right now there's what, uh, four or five? And they cashed in those CDs to pay for this fire truck. And without it's, borrowing money. And it's paid for. And it's paid for. So if they had to buy a new truck, which that's been a discussion in which the fire district is going to do now, is they are going to put in a capital replacement fund. And some of the board directors are, in, you know, they don't want to do it because that's going to increase the fire district, you know, the contributions to them. But if they had to buy that truck tomorrow, they had no choice, they'd have to borrow the money to buy that truck. So three quarters of a million dollars, where you come up with it? You go to the bank and borrow it. You borrow it and you pay interest on it. By the time that truck's paid for, it's wore out. The next shot is, you're plus you're paying that interest on that vehicle, and you could have bought two for what you paid for one. So it's not, you know, the capital replacement is huge. A little here, a little there goes a long ways. And to do it in the capital replacement you know, realm is the smartest way of doing it. You know, there's gonna be unforeseen things. Lift station pump can go out on Connor Road 5 across from the, by, by the subway there. That could be $2 million to repair it. That's not something, you know, it, and, and it may be in the capital replacement in five years from now, but that pump can go out tomorrow, it can go out tonight. And we have no choice in that matter. It has to be done or you're, there's gonna be people ain't using their bathrooms. You know, so there again, you got a capital replacement fund, like Mr. Becker said, all of a sudden this plow truck doesn't need to be replaced for a couple of years. We could rob that to pay for that without having to bond it. Which, which is, yeah. Which is, you know, I'm not saying rob is a bad word to use, 
But what I'm saying is, is, is use that money so that truck, that we don't need to replace that truck, we could use that money to get us by to replace that. But even in up. your capital maintenance plan, you're you're avoiding that too. You don't want to shift money. You don't want to rob from Peter to no, pay is, Paul. You want to have this money available. As awkward as the sentence sounds, it is more expensive to not fund it. Yep. I mean, that sounds like an awkward sentence, the construct of it, but it is more expensive to not fund your, your capital maintenance needs because you will eventually get stuck issuing bonds. And once you do, you look at the interest that you paid on those and you realize, that could have paid for a whole lot of other stuff on this list. You know, and there was what was about what four years ago when we redid some streets and people got assessed taxes on those streets that had to get repaired and for curb and gutter and everything else. And there were some people that were getting hit double because they were on a corner. And you know, the street maintenance or you know, road maintenance program should help alleviate a lot of that problem not a hundred percent but help alleviate it so there isn't such a hike on that you know so i mean it, it, it the streets get pounded i mean realistically and not everybody that drives on them are city by sandy residents but on that flip side wherever you go and drive on their streets you're wrecking their streets as well as they're wrecking ours and you don't pay for replacing theirs so you know, the, the street program is, you know, that, that program is huge to have that in effect. You know, for hopefully, knock on wood, we don't have to have some major work done sooner than later. You know, but, you know, it's just, it's something we got to really, you know, I like, want people to understand. It's, you got to save for that rainy day. And that's what this comes down to. I mean, you could, we, we you could plead, you, you could tax it, but who wants to do that? Well, you just want to save for it. Yeah, save your money. And, you know, the other, you know, we talked a little bit about not funding capital maintenance and replacement, not funding capital projects and the, and the costs associated with bonding once you later find yourself in a bind. Um, the other problem with not funding those things and the other reason not funding those items is, is more expensive is, in the meantime, if we haven't repaired the roads, Public Works spends considerable amount of money and time every year keeping them going. Um, and the same goes with, uh, with vehicles. Vehicles are a really easy example, right? If, you, if, if a department head doesn't have any idea when the next vehicle will be purchased, they don't know if money will be there, and they don't know what the, the year that it will be replaced, they don't have certainty about that, department heads may very well in respond to the incentives before them correctly and pay $5,000 to repair a vehicle that if it was their personal vehicle, they would never put that money in. But you have to be able to give the department heads that certainty that they understand that the money will be there and that it will be there in the year that it's assigned so that they don't get stuck with a perverse incentive where they need to fix a vehicle that in their personal life they would never spend money on. Prime example was two squad cars in December a year ago. Yep. yep, exactly. Exactly. I mean, we had a vehicle that didn't have very high mileage on it, yep. but it was getting to be the point where it's costing more than having the vehicle. Yep. And a lot of people don't realize the squad cars in town here, city city trucks, maintenance trucks, whatever, they don't get driven a lot of miles, but it's the worst miles in the world. The short miles are harder on a vehicle than long miles. You know, so it's, you know, it's, it's the city vehicles are high maintenance. Yep. Yep, especially squad vehicles for sure. Um, Next, we get a tax rate history. Um, you know, big thing to know is that as you know, as it compares to history, uh, tax rate proposed tonight is you know, not out of line with with the with the past and is below the average. Um, it's a good comparison. Um, you'd certainly like to see that be either a, a slower, steadier increase or a slower, steadier decrease. Um, a little less variability in those uh, in those lines, but um, that, that's that's part of putting together a good plan and, and sticking to it. Um, I touched on a little bit of this with property tax calculation. Why is tax rate more important than uh, than the levy amount? Um, touched on this a little bit. The you know the levy is always going to go up um, as you add residences, as you add businesses, and you add need for additional service. You have more patrol miles. Um, more miles to roads to maintain, um, those types of things. 
um, you're going to levy more dollars over time regardless. Um, and that's why the tax rate is a better, better understanding. Um, keeping that tax rate the same um, does adjust for those increases in residence and, uh, and additional, additional need for, for services. Um, and the tax rate is, the bottom here is a very simplified, the, the actual calculation for tax bills is considerably more complex than this, but very simply, property value times your tax rate is, is your property taxes. Um, there's more to it than that, but that is the very basic <coughs> one sentence uh, line on that. Um, some other things that we considered along the way, um, one of the things we talked about was delaying street improvement projects. Um, you know, it, it comes back to uh, it's more expensive to, to not fund it. And um, a lot of these projects were identified 10 years ago and, and people have been waiting. And, um, and, and they, they might appreciate some certainty on when those projects will get done. Um, so we, we opted not to delay those projects but fit as many as we could in in that short period of time. Um, Another is to delay or eliminate capital maintenance or replacement items. Um, you know, again, this is this is a list of things that are needed, right? So we're talking about tuck pointing brickwork. We're talking about plumbing fixtures, electrical fixtures, squad cars, um, you know, mowers for for green space. I mean, you know, things that um, residents expect will be done and taken care of. Um, those are the types of items on that list. And again, um, not funding them is more expensive. Uh, might save money today, but it will certainly cost more later. Um, another thing, we, of course, would look at every year. Uh, the other option is reducing operating expenditures. Um, you know, contracts and legal obligations will limit the scope uh, of what you have to work with within the general fund on operating expenditures. Um, but since the the preliminary meeting, we were able to um, reduce healthcare costs considerably. Um, and, uh, and you see that reflected in the proposed tax rate uh, tonight. Um, this is uh, just an informational. Um, this gives that perspective of, you know, if I say, um, you know, the 15 year average is 68.5%, is well, how did I come up with that? Prove it kind of thing, right? Um, this, is, this is the data. This is from, from the county. Um, this is, these are just, these are the things that actually happened. Um, these are the market values that actually got sent to us from the county and reported to the state. Um, these are levied amounts that we reported to the county and they in turn uh, sent to the state. Um, these are the actual certified tax rates. Um, this is what has happened and on the far right um, is what we're, what we're working with today and what we're proposing. This is the sheet that I was talking about earlier for those in the audience that I noticed that in 2011, which is an election year, taxes would go down. 2012, it went back up. 2015, it went down. 2016, it went back up. And it continued like that. Uh, I think what Mr. Becker and this council would like to do is just keep it an even flow. So that 3.8 that's being proposed today, uh, if I'm understanding right, we would either stay or, or lower than that rate from here on. I can't promise that, but I can tell you that this budget substantially reduces the risk of variability in the tax rate. If I had to put forth the best guess, yes, I think we're on track for and, and a looking at declining tax rate over time. And looking at this sheet, taxes were 68% higher, give or take. On average. On average than what we're proposing now. Six what? points higher, right? Am I seeing that right? Where are you looking? Well, I mean, if you look at this whole scope of things here, I mean, it was... Oh, yeah, just comparing the average tax rate versus... Yeah, it was 68%. Yes. Yeah, we've had, we've had tax rates as high as 85, if I remember. I think, uh, yeah, 85. Yeah, 85 2017, it was 85.9. Um, and during the, great re during the Great Recession, we had tax rates in the, in the 50s. Um, that would... You would, you would probably see something similar to that in most cities. Um, most cities during the Great Recession got pounded so hard you were, you were going to cut costs because you were going to lose market value. Um, so you, you would see some of that, but yeah. So it, you know, the, the 64, um, I'm sorry, the 60. Uh, we're coming in below average. 
Yeah, the 64.172 is, is below average for five years or 15. Yep. Yep. Like I said, if you keep hitting below average, you, you will go down. There's not really another way to mathematically work that out. Over time, over time that average goes down, over time your trend line is down. Just how that works mathematically. And if, and if somebody wanted to see this, Mr. Becker, all they'd have to do is call and ask you for this, and Correct. you'd yeah, give it to is, them. This is all information that would otherwise be available at the county. Um, but of course, I, you know, I wouldn't send anybody on a goose chase trying to track down all those years of data at the county. You can just ask them for it. But this is all information publicly available to anybody. And um, just the last part is um, just a reminder to to the presiding officer that the Department of Revenue is uh, would say that uh, guidance and best practice would be to open open the floor for discussion and um, citizen input, resident input. So if there's a if there's just a, of course council should consider any discussion they might need to have, but to open it up to the to the public. In uh, the previous year, the reason that the tax rate was lowered so much was partially because they were taking money from the general fund to kind of create an artificial lowering of that tax rate. Is that is that the case? It left like five hundred thousand dollars that they yeah. took out that now we're required to to pay back by yeah. uh, by city code. Yeah, and you see this. Um, this is in the packet and um, within the budget on page thirteen. Um, if, I'm, if I'm not misunderstanding, what Councilmember Gordon is referring to is uh, the use of unref unreserved fund balance um, in amount of five hundred and twenty-two thousand. Yeah, and that's uh, that's for the budget year we're currently in, which is why we're now talking about the right. um, in part why we're talking about a, a change in the tax rate. So one of the big reasons it's going to be, or looks like it's going to have to be higher now, is because of the decision last year to to use that available funds to. Yeah, to create fund, that that yeah. artificial lowering of the rate. Yeah, so fund fund balance is um, fund balance is the kind of thing that over time you like to have rise when the economy is good, and you like to have it be available when the economy goes bad, mm -hmm. so that you don't have to drastically cut costs, um, you don't have to levy as much, but you can still float all the city operations and provide the services that residents have, expect. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a rainy day fund essentially. But it was tapped for some reason last year. That's what I would call stealing from Peter to pay Paul. Perhaps yes, yeah. Um, Five hundred twenty-two thousand enterprise though. funds that were also required, like you showed there, were required to pay those back for the hotel project, and uh, yeah, you know that's another reason why there's there's less to go around than than there might otherwise be. Yeah, we're um, yeah we're we're, we're going to be transferring. Um, about eighty-five thousand just for the hotel project to water. So about eighty-five thousand dollars a year out of the general fund and into. Um, and that's, and that's for the next water ten, and sewer, for next next ten, ten years, years for that, yes. right? Yeah, those two the water and sewer funds covered that business subsidy right. on behalf of the general fund. I'm glad you're on Team I Sandy, Mr. Becker. I'm glad to be here. Okay. Any comments, questions, concerns? Any other comments or questions by the council? Uh, one more question. So, I, you know, I think we had talked before. I mean, if we wanted to get this to a zero uh, increase mm -hmm. or no increase at all, just keep the rate the same. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a cut of 107,000. I think you had told me. Is that still? I, I think 103,500 would be the. So if, get us if we could a find 103,000 to cut, we'd be at zero. Yes. But if we cut that out of the capital improvement levy and we cut that out of the the uh, street, you know, construction levy, then you know you're 
you really should be saving that money for when you when you need it. And uh, I don't know, it's a tough decision. It's uh, I'd like to do it, but the the trade off there is if if so if we just talk to like the one levy, right? If we just want to say, all right, street projects, we're going to drop one hundred and three thousand five hundred bucks out of that levy, mm -hmm. that one particular line item, right, for four four twenty five. If you do that, really, you have two things that one of two things that can happen, assuming the council intends to actually complete all those projects, which I've only been given every indication that's the intent. Um, you really only have one of two scenarios. You either then turn around and levy that much more in the very next year and subsequent, or you shift all the projects back in time in order to give yourself more time to make it up. Um, if the first option of simply levying more than later is again, is back to the, it's more expensive to not fund it. In the end, it's, it's more expensive. The cost of those projects will simply rise over time. If you simply delay them, again, the cost of the projects rise, um, but we're currently in a position where, um, you know, these, these projects have been on tap for a lot of years and they're, I can't imagine that there, there I mean, there must be some residents who really would like to see it get done. Um, and once we, once we say, all right, here's our plan, we've got a, a way to do this, and here are the years in which these things will actually get done, to then say, no, we're gonna push it back two or four years. Um, I'm sure there'd probably be some residents that would be okay with that, but I suspect there are some residents involved in those projects that would be less than okay with that. But th those would be the trade-offs that the council would consider. But another thing we gotta keep in mind, too, is we also have a street maintenance program that <coughs> They go out and they seal, uh, you know, the, the seal cracks, seal, seal the cracks, seal coat it, you know, gravel to help maintain, to keep those roads longer, longevity on those roads, mm -hmm. you know, and that can help put in play on the certain things, but, you know, you still can't keep putting a bandaid on some of the streets that need some dire help. Mm -hmm. and, 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 that and I see in. what Councilman Gordon is saying. I mean, it, it would be nice to... It would be great to cut 103,000 out of here, but mm -hmm. I don't see how it's feasible because all we're doing is prolonging more and I'm things. Not, I'm not necessarily saying we should, but I just that's that's the difference right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I just, I just want to make that it's 103,000, yeah. but I mean it's because we're actually setting money aside for the future the way it should be done. You know, I mean, like I mean, Mike said, I mean, I mean, had, had we had we had 1.8 million dollars or 500 thousand dollars that were. Uh, from that general fund. Yeah, I'll just say wasted, we'll mm -hmm. put it yeah. that way. Uh, then this would be zero. Right, right. Or or lower. Or more, yeah. Or lower, yeah. Or lower, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll speak for myself. As long as I'm sitting behind this council desk, I will always entertain a way to look for savings costs on things. Mm -hmm. <coughs> not not to <coughs> bond for this stuff in the future, like Mike said. I mean, for every million dollars we bond, we're paying 250000 and in interest, I mean that's that's ridiculous. That's so. crazy. Yeah. When do you? I mean, your goal is to get the city to be debt free eventually, right? I mean, that's yep. that's the reasoning behind this is that we want to be debt free. We don't want to have this this yeah. bonding and, the, and the last, paying the, interest. And our last general fund obligation bond uh, matures in September of 2030, and the last enterprise fund um, uh, bond issue matures in September of 2031. <coughs> so the goal is to be debt free and. In 11 years, basically. I well, think that, I think that 12 would be 11, 11 or 12 years. I, I, I've, I've been in cities where bond issues occur on a regular basis, and once you get into that cycle, it is incredibly difficult to get out. I mean, you have no choice but to bite the bullet and raise your levy a gigantic amount in order to get out of that cycle. And you, most councils just flat out don't do that, and for very obvious reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and when a city, I think when a city has an opportunity before it to find a way out of debt, um, I think that if you don't at least give it a shot, and maybe it doesn't work out, right? I mean, maybe it doesn't work out, but I think if you don't at least give it a shot, um, you know, I'd hate to see that, but that's also not my decision, so. I'd rather go down trying. That would be my. That would be my recommendation. You know, and that's another thing too, is if if the, the year, there was a tax 
tax decrease of 22%, I think that was last year. Yep. If that would have been kept at zero or one, two percent, this number would look smaller too. Yeah, or, or even 10 like it had been originally. Yep. Approved. So, I mean, by dropping taxes isn't doing anything good for you in the long, long run. You know, I mean, by, by dropping it, you know, 22 percent, that's, that's not doing any, any favors in the future. And, and the, they used $500,000 from the general fund that's supposed to be there for a rainy day to, to make that happen besides, you know. And that's, it was very evident on this council yeah. as long as I've been here that we never dropped that fund balance below 50%. Right. Right. It was imperative that it stayed at that 50%. Mm -hmm. And somehow that dropped us below that 50%. Now we got to pay it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and not just the Hotel Patrick, we'll have to pay back that 500000 right. on top of. Um, we've since changed that fund balance policy, so it's not so restrictive. Um, our auditors had seen that as being the most restrictive in the state, requiring a return to 50% within two years. Right. We've simply taken out two years, and now we're, as a council, we're in this, as a city, we're simply required to have a plan. Um, and I've presented that to, to, to the council before, and we'll, we'll revise and, and update and, and monitor that as needed. But, but again, having that 50% fund balance in there, does help to replace that lift station pump when it needs to be done mm -hmm. but rather than taking it from capital replacement or something so that that you know that that's not a bad idea to oh, have yeah, that specific 50 percent fund balance in yeah, it you gotta have. so i mean that's mm -hmm. it's a good idea if it was stuck to yeah right if it's not taken advantage of like it yeah. was last year yeah mm -hmm. so um you are my presentation is over that's what i got so it's uh if there are any comments or, or or discussion from the from the public otherwise it, it's simply council discussion and uh and action any other questions by or comments by the the, the council no. i'd open it up to the public then for discussion if you'd like to step forward and state your name and address you are more than welcome to ask any questions, have any comments, concerns? In the back row, sir, step forward if you wouldn't mind. Just if you would state your name and address for, for the record, sir. My name is Ed Tiller, I'm at 400 Fifth Avenue South. And uh, <clears throat> I guess I'm not real impressed with these tax rates because there's another component and that's property value. And um, <clears throat> I'm assuming that everybody in the city has had their property values go up, their taxable value go up by at least 20% this year. Mine went up by 40%. Um, so you got a 20% increase in revenue just right there. Is that true? No, because the, you're paying county tax. No, I'm just talking about the city portion. It's the city, the, the, your t property valued is by the county. Is yeah. Are you aware of that? Yeah. The city has nothing to do with that. They tax it on that value, though, don't they? Uh, isn't that how they? Ta isn't that how I'm taxed? I, no, our tax. Are, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Becker, um, that we don't take. The tax value, well, our tax increase isn't taken in consideration the value of the property, is it? So how this would work is, is that if you, if you left your tax rate the same forever, right? We just stuck it at, what are we at, 64? We just left it at 64% forever. As property values went up, we would bring in the additional revenue from that increase. And you would just sit there at 64. Yeah. The proposed taxes. The, but city, the city portion is 55% increase for me. Part of what he's just said is, is that he's looking at a 40% change of valuation. My recommendation would be you, you unless, unless you've completely remodeled your home or added 40% to the square footage, you might want to go to the Board of Equalization and ask the county assessor how they came up with that. Because you're not, that's not the first statement I've seen like that. I'm tr having a hard it's, time understanding how yeah, a value could change. About 25 years ago. I'm having a hard time understanding I mean, personally, just in my professional experience, I have a hard time understanding how any value 
residential property value on an existing home that maybe was built 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, how it could change suddenly 40% in one year. That seems remarkable. Drastic. That seems remarkable to me. So I'm, I'm guessing that on the average, people maybe got half of what I got. I and even half I've, is a 20% increase. I've, I've seen a number of those. And that's been my same advice to the other residents is you, you got to get to the Board of Equalization. I mean, 40% is huge. Um, other more normal range would then 6%. Six? Six. I've seen a So little, you've, got seen a six a percent, of, you've got a 6% or more increase already without doing anything. Say that again? We are, we're getting an extra yeah. 6% on the property value. We're getting 6%. Your so revenues are going up 6% just because values went up. Even if we keep our yep. tax rate the same, even if we don't raise taxes, we're still getting more taxes yes. collected because his property and everybody's yep. property values. Yep. Is so right. and, so. and that's what counts, is what, mm -hmm. what are we actually paying? Right. You know, tax rates this year, that. I remember back when values were dropping and dropping and dropping, taxes were not dropping then because the city needed money to operate, they just increased. My property value decreased, decreased, decreased year after year, and my taxes had a slight increase every year because yeah, the city the, needs money to run. Right. Well, this, this, the, city, the city has no role in assessing, right? So that's a, that's a county issue. Right. And, and so certainly do, please but do look into that. But the city advantage of if, if, if the city were to set the tax rate at 64%, let's say we decided that where we're at this year is where we're going to be at forever, 64%. If your home didn't change in value, the tax bill of the city would never change. Right. Yeah, but the values did change. Yeah, and they and absolutely will over time. And inflation will inflation alone will do that. Um, if we if we were to not build enough homes, um, that would also impact that, right? If there's demand for housing and we are not building enough homes, that f puts further upward price pressure on existing homes. So you see that as a as a I mean that's another good reason that we've we've discussed with some residents before about well do we how many homes do we want to be building, um, you know from an from an economist standpoint, that would be. That would be the, the metric that I would be looking at is, is how stable are current residential home prices. If they're rising rapidly, that probably means we're not adding to the housing uh, market uh, robustly enough to alleviate that upward pressure. Well, the values in this area have been going up quite rapidly. Yep. Last year they went up. Um, Do you understand what he's saying, though, that you need to go to the county and to tie with yes, that? Because but, we've, but I've seen as, a lot of as people. A, as if you're running the city, and you're looking at, I got to have so much revenue. That revenue is going to be based on property values, not just your property, your tax rate, but the values are also going to play into that. And if the values are going up at a significant rate, your revenues are going to go up at a significant rate. I <clears throat> Right, and that's why we're encouraging citizens to go fight that at the county level because your rate right. should not go up 40% if you haven't. And, that, and that's also where we're trying to lay out a plan here for putting ourselves in a position where over time we can tick that tax rate downward in the other direction. 40% 40, 40 seems. Trying to not have spikes. Well, this is a spike. Yeah, 40% seems drastically high. Well, this, this, just the city portion is a 55% increase. That is your proposed, though. You got to remember that's proposed. Okay. okay, so you're going to drop it a little bit, so it'll only be a 48 percent increase. Well, the, do you, do you we, mind letting Mr. Becker look at that, sir? The city proposed on there is 9.7 percent, and we've settled at 3.8. Yeah. So, it's, so that's it's dropped not, six percent. It's not quite a two-thirds. Well, you've already cut. got 40 percent from me just by the valuation. No, that's not just the city, though. Yeah, and if you if you're looking at the percent. No, everybody got the 40 already. On top, you know, that's the a county total got forty percent too. That's a total of forty percent. Well, each no, each he, portion is forty percent per year. Each jurisdiction tax is based on the market value, the, the taxable market value, and if his value went up forty percent, then each agency is is working from that number. From that forty percent. From the way I understand him, he's saying that we're getting forty percent increase, the county's getting forty percent increase. That isn't true. That's no, your that total is increase. Because no, that would be a hundred. That would be a. That'd be a hundred twenty percent increase no, 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 in your taxes. No, no, no. He, I think he's right here. No, I yes, I am right here. If, if, no. if we if we tax him hundred dollars this year, and the county tax him hundred dollars, forty hundred dollars. That's two hundred dollars. Forty percent increase is eighty bucks. 
is still 40%. Yeah. He's, yeah. He, he's oh. absolutely correct. If the tax rate simply stayed the same, if it had been the same 10 years ago as it is today, and it would stay the same for another 10 years, right, all this time, and his value goes up in one single year, 40%, even if we change the tax rate, we don't change it at all, his, his taxes just went up 40% because of the valuation. That's absolutely true. So I'm not sure how we could, I can't imagine what could have possibly happened to your property that would change it 40% in one year. But I don't know. It's, it's been the same for over 25 years. Yeah, That's I, why he's, he's encouraging you to go to the, to the county. But I'm encouraging you all to realize that I'm not the only one who's had a large increase in property value. Much of the city has had a large increase in property value. So your revenues are going up significantly just from that alone. You are not working from the same revenue that you had last year. What was that percentage okay. that we projected our revenues to go up this year? Did you you, the, you oh, showed it at the beginning here? What was that? Yeah, three point eight one percent was the change in the in the tax rate. Not the rate, the revenue. The revenue is. is that's it, based the on total levy value. amount is fourteen. He's so talking about through the county and everything. County evaluation. What are we What are we going to be getting from the county? What are we anticipating? All I get is the total market value, right? So we can see. So we go back to this. All I get, sorry, all I get is the top line there, estimated market value. Um, the county will help me verify the others, but basically you can see there we went. That's we, about a 10. We're up to. 10, 12 percent increase. It's, it's 11, what does that say, 11.8? 11 Six. 11.86. So you have so an 11 point some, increase, so, increase in revenue so, right there. Yeah, so some of the, you know, a good, a good portion of any increase in market value is going to be new construction. I mean, that, I mean, because that's, you're going from zero to 220 or whatever it might, it might be for the value of the home. That's always going to be a large portion of it. Um, you're sir, putting together your budget for next year, you've already got 11.8% increase in revenue right from the get go. You're not working that's even if we left things the same. We're already, had, we're already getting had, an increase. It didn't increase. make any changes. <clears throat> we're already getting an increase, and you want us to be more responsible with that increase. 11.8% increase is a very good increase. Right. I would agree. I've been self-employed for 45 years, and you just can't do that. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, well, I need more money, so we'll just do a 40% increase. Well. I mean, I, I understand your government, so you can just take whatever you want. But nobody else can do. You can't do that with your own budget in your own house. You can't decide, I need a new car, I've got to replace the driveway, the roof needs to be done. Employer, I need a 40% increase this year, and if you give it to me, I promise not to ask more than 5% for the next several years. It just won't go anywhere. I do want you to understand, you already have 11.8% increase in revenue. Just starting out. And that's just reality. And I can absorb this. It's, it's a, my total tax bill went up 50%. But there's a lot of people in town that can't absorb that. If you would mind stepping up, state your name and address for the record, ma'am. Hi, my name is Lana Holland, 37 Buckskin. And I totally agree with what you said is, is called the county assessor, because that's what I did, because I had an 84% increase. <laughs> so mm. how that happened is, after I had a heart attack, after looking at it, my property taxes went from 1600 to $3,000. So I thought, what the hell? <laughs> so I called the county assessor and said, what are you basing this out of? My house did not turn to gold in the past 20 years of living there. So I explained to her that I have the biggest property tax increase out of my whole neighborhood. So, and because I've compared notes with all my neighbors, so she actually came out and she's wonderful. She came out and she said, here's the thing. This is not your fault. This is entirely our fault. 
since 1978, since my house was built, the county has no improvements to my house whatsoever. So when they came out, they said, well, a lot's been done to your house in the past 20 years. We're gonna tax it. <laughs> so that's what they did. Um, so I, I basically, I said any county did an inaccurate assessment of my house for 22 years since I've lived there. And they taxed it all to me <coughs> in 2020. So had I not called and said, what the hell? <laughs> so she, I would never have known this. So there are probably other inaccuracies out there as well. So I would encourage people to call the county assessor. Her name's Alicia, she's wonderful. And she'll come out and she'll look at your house again and explain to you why. Um, and I also told her that we did some improvements and knocked out a, <coughs> um, a wall. So our four bedroom is now a three bedroom. And she noted that and she said for 2021, your property value will reflect that and so will your tax. So it does really change. Um, I also think that the public needs to know that Isani pays the highest tax of a lot of other communities, including the Metro. And that's because from what she explained to me, um, we don't have a lot of businesses that pay high tax here. We have a dollar store that's gonna pay a significantly low tax relative to other businesses like Menards and Walmart and other bigger businesses. Um, so this, the Metro has a lower tax than us, which to me didn't make sense, but then she explained to me about the whole business tax, tax aspect. So I would encourage you as the city council to get businesses in here that aren't gonna just rape the public, that they're actually gonna be doing good for the public and a dollar store doesn't do it. Thank well, you. We agree with that. We're not gonna disagree with that, but at, the, but at the same time, if they comply to everything that's in an ordinance or regulated, I guess you could just yeah. say in plain English, there's no holding them back. We, we can't right. say, nope, you can't come True. here. True, but maybe some public education on why that is and why Isani pays a high tax. Because right now you just have angry residents. So you need to explain to them why. That's all we ask is just some transparency and why we have, why we're being taxed and raked over the coals. There has to be a reason other than we're just, you know, SOL. I mean, there has to be a reason. So you have to explain it to the public. And that kind of will get you off the hot seat too. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I'm not, <laughs> I think since I've been here, I've said all you need to do is call me mm -hmm. and I'll tell you anything you want to know. I'm very transparent, but maybe I shouldn't wait for that phone call. You're right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any others? We can hear you. Come on up. You're in our county. It's, yeah. it's all a team effort here. Well, I was just wondering if uh, our protest against that company that's here in town, is it partly a financial issue if they, if we, if they should leave? Is that a big loss to you? Because there's 10 of us here to protest that business. Yeah. Can you fill us in a little bit on that? Does that have anything to do with business? Fi financially, it doesn't really make a difference because it went into an existing commercial building. And right now, the state doesn't really give in to the, the, uh, the black box theory that if something is empty, it's worthless. Um, so the, ta the taxes on that property that would be similar. The taxes on that property would be similar whether it's occupied. And if you wouldn't mind just stating your name and address oh, for the yes. record. Merrily Celine. 34175 Verdon Street, Northwest, Cambridge. Thank you, ma'am. Hopefully, Mr. Becker answered your question, by the way, ma'am. I didn't quite hear it all. I, I, I hope I understood correctly. You, you kind of asked if there was like a fin basically a financial incentive to have the business that we might collect. Um, basically, the city is going to collect based on the structure. So it, whether it's occupied or not, we're going to get basically the same tax revenue. So. Once the building so is there, no. it's there. <laughs> yeah. Good. Absolutely no. Yeah. I, I, and 
we were kind of off the realm as, as far as that business went, but uh, we're fighting in it in a different area that we cannot talk about at this time. But we're not giving up. Any other questions in regard to budget, finances, taxes? You can step forward. Global for Blossom. I just got a quick question with the CBE joint. I personally don't have a problem with it. I don't go there by any means. Um, you have to be 21 or older to enter into the store. No. 18 or older? Yes. No. So. No. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yeah, Miss Selman, feel free. Um, you, there's not an age restriction to enter the store. There is an area that is age restricted inside the store. Okay, so it is separated. So you have to be an adult to access. I'm guessing what you guys don't want the youth to see. It's a CBD and... Have you been in there? No, but I have. I, I do know what, what they sell. And with all due respect, ma'am, I lived in St. Cloud and I saw all those stores. I know what they have in there. Um, I have no problem with that store being here. Um, as long as it's age restricted to the adult side of the things. Does that make sense? It does, but what I was looking for was budgetary questions, sir. Right, okay. right. Well, I just wanted <laughs> to be, just, I now? just simply <laughs> wanted to say that. Might I was just on. wondering myself if it was age restricted for a certain part. Certain part, yes, sir. Thank you. Any other budgetary questions? Step right up, sir. State your name and address if you wouldn't mind for the record. Uh, I'm John Ferris. Uh, address is 100 8th Avenue Southeast. So uh, thank you for the opportunity. I just wanted to say that I, I'm a new resident, moved here a year ago, and so I don't have a lot of the history of the, um, <clears throat> the political history of Asante or, but I, I would say as a new resident who plans on being here long term that I strongly support a capital maintenance plan. Um, I also support like a steady, you know, I'd say fiscal responsibility of keeping taxes at a steady increase or steady rate. Um, so, I, you know, I, I agree with Mr. Becker's uh, plan and would strongly support that as a resident here. You do understand that that plan was never in place, Mr. Ferris. I understand. Okay. Yeah. And so it, uh, <clears throat> well, I, I reviewed I, a lot of the information in city financials previous to the meeting and saw some of those same trends that you did. And, um, I think I had some of the similar questions, and um, so I think with the dip that uh, Councilman Gordon pointed out last year from that unreserved fund, I think it makes a lot of sense why we had an artificial drop, and now we're seeing a, a tax increase again, quote unquote, a, a tax increase. And 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 I I know Mr. Ferris, I'll I'll tell everybody and anybody I did campaign on lowering taxes, keep them the same or lower taxes. But I didn't intend, I'll just say it in plain English, to be screwed when I entered the seat. And that's exactly what happened to me. And now, I, now I'm sitting here trying to uh, justify, it. justify it and figure out how I'm going to fix it. And that's why I say, thank God I have a Mike Becker. Yeah. Well, I would support it. As someone who works with budgets and capital maintenance plans, I think it's a, it's a good plan for the city. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Some of those changes to that budget were made the last meeting of last year, right? I mean, in the kind of Cor in the... Cor correct. State your name and address for the record, sir. Mark Greller, 227 Richard Avenue. You know, uh, the maintenance plan is fine. However, if I'm understanding this correctly, it's a little unfair to people like me. I paid for my street taxes, okay? I paid for that for eight years. And now, if I'm understanding this right, Part of my taxes are going to help other people pay for theirs so they don't have to pay the bill I did? It, it, so, am I right? It, so any assessments that would be applied to a street project would still be applicable within the plan? But, but they'll be alleviated. They'll be lower now, right, with this plan? With, with, within the plan, I projected assessments below what our current standard is because I want to be fiscally conservative. I don't want to get there and mm -hmm. find out that the council's had to change their heart about what the assessment policy should be, and mm -hmm. now we're short. Um, but to that extent, um, any assessments that would apply would be entirely up to the council to simply roll those assessments out as they have been in the past. Right, but yep. they will be lower with this plan, right? 
the same I mean, assessment. They, they, they would almost have to be because the, we're paying taxes for this maintenance plan to fix the, the roads. The assessment policy would remain the same, and assessments are never um, never cover the full cost of any project. Oh, I, I understand that. So, yeah. um, any policy that is currently in force that identifies the assessments and the calculation method that is still in place. Yeah. I mean, I took a hit and a half on that thing, yep. and my road didn't need to be fixed, to be honest with you. I watched them dig up the sewer. Those pipes were pristine. There was nothing wrong with them. The road was nice. Now we have a big bump-up curb messing with the suspension on our vehicles. You know, and, and I paid for that. Now it seems like I have to help everybody who's going to have their street assessments in the, you know, in the future. I'm going to help pay for that too. If I'm seeing this right, nothing has changed. It's just the, that we're, no, the ass the assessments that any resident would have on a future project would be under the same rules as as we've had. Um, the assessment policy that's been in place for a number of years. Those same things would apply. Now, in the plan, I have purposely either suppressed or reduced uh, projected assessment revenue simply to give any any future council some flexibility without having to completely redo things or delay in a project an entire year in order to make some minor change. Um, but as, a, as it stands, when you've got an assessment policy in place, unless the council takes action otherwise, you're pretty well compelled to follow your own assessment policy. That, right, but that's part, of this, part of the street that is being paid for out of this pool, mm -hmm. obviously what's left for the citizens to pay is less. It would have been the same under any street project at any point in time. So there would have been, you, there's always, there's always a, a certain level of, uh, a certain, well, there's a couple of different approaches. Um, in any street project, one source of funding is going to be assessments, right? In certain projects, you will have assessments. Certain projects, you won't. And there'll be a variety of reasons, but that's all laid out in the mm -hmm. assessment policy. Okay. The remaining funding is either going to come from the state, that is uh, municipal uh, construction state aid funding, or it comes from the residents at large based on property values. And it's either collected through uh, a street project uh, levy like we're doing for Fund 425, or you wait, you issue debt, and then everybody pays on the debt plus the interest. Um, so everybody's gonna, everybody is going to contribute to, it to some extent, to any road project that has city funds. Um, next year, the 6th Avenue project uh, that will go in 2020, um, that's $461,000. That's fully funded by the state. Okay, so the assessments will basically stay the same? Correct. Yeah, the council would have to change. We, have we'd to have take, to change it. They'd have to take formal yeah. action to change the assessment policy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. some of the citizens that have been here for a long time, we've been taking it in the teeth for a long time. You know, we paid for all of the infrastructure across the highway, you know, for our years. Right. And, you know, it, it, every it, assessment would stay the same unless this council changed it. And okay. yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I was just I don't foresee that happening. You know, I, I, you know, it sounds like a great plan. And but Mark, I, you know, I was just to clarify something. That infrastructure across 65 should have never been on the city's tax bit burden, period. If I would have been on this council, I would have seen to it that that would have never happened. Because when you're a developer, mm -hmm. you're responsible for that infrastructure. Well, yeah, what happened was that developers skipped town. No, the council voted on to allow, really? allow them to carry the bond. That was done before he skipped town. They, the, yeah. the city carried the bond on that, on that street, yeah. on all that project over there. So, no, not on my watch will I allow that to happen because it's, it's a business. <laughs> Everyone was a 3-2 vote. Yeah, so, yeah. no, that would never happen in my, in my watch. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. No more? All right, with that being said, I will take a motion. I make a motion to accept and move forward with it. So we, I have a, oh, we, go we ahead, just, Mr. Rector. We just need to be very clear whether we're taking all those resolutions in one fell swoop or if we want to do them one at a time and ask any other, any other questions. I think it's, I think it's all pretty straightforward on all of it. Okay. I would agree. Anybody? I just, I mean, is there nowhere that we can cut that 103,000 to get back to I mean, to at least kind of a compromise. I mean, I know we're, we're setting aside that 256 for capital improvements, and I think it was, uh, I don't remember what the exact amount was on the, the street uh, the street construction levy. It was 267. Yep. Um, I mean, what would happen if, if we if we want to meet in the middle somewhere, we want to keep this tax rate at, at zero uh, for an increase, 
and we take 103,000 out of, let's say the, you know, the three, uh, maybe the EDA levy takes a share of it <laughs> and the street construction and the capital maintenance takes, uh, you know, the general fund, well, I guess you maybe can't. Uh, okay, so starting at the bottom, uh, in, uh, and we're looking at the bold ones, right? So 369, mm -hmm. 312, debt service levy, we just, we just have to do that. This, these are obligations that we already committed to some years right. ago. Uh, abatement levy, um, again, we've got a, a, a business subsidy agreement, right. development agreement. We have to follow through and we have to show this separate levy so we can't adjust mm -hmm. that. Um, EDA levy, EDA is funded um, mostly through the levy and, and, or, and a small remainder from uh, a transfer from the general fund. So if we shorted the EDA levy, the general fund would simply be left to pick up the additional. Um, and we already reduced the uh, levy or the transfer from the general fund to the EDA quite substantially. Okay. Um, that we, we saved a lot. I mean, if, you're, if you recall, we had a CD director and an ED director. We have now just one position. So right. there's been a significant, I mean, we basically saved 50% on staff costs in, the, right. in, in the EDA fund. Um, the, street reconstruction, the street construction levy, um, you know, to my mind, um, you know, that's probably the easiest one to do, but um, again, we, we, we have to either then commit to next year's levy for that fund is going to be significantly higher or we're going to have to push projects starting in 2022. South, Brook, have to go South back. Brook Viewers, I think, is the first one. That's, yeah, I'd have yeah. to look. But it, it's 2022 is the first year that we have city funding in a project. 2021 in or 2020 and 2021 are state aid funded. So those would be, those wouldn't matter. But right now we're using those those two years in order to get a pot of money together to be able to put toward, uh, uh, the project in 2022. Um, so we could, we could move that back. Um, uh, that'd be one option or commit to, we're gonna levy, uh, we're not gonna move them back, we're gonna levy additional. But if, you're, if you've got 2020, 2021 and 2022 to collect those money. If you take that 103 out, you're basically saying we need to have you know 52 and a half, or I'm sorry, 51 and a half extra on each of the next two years to get us into that same cash flow position. And I'm not disagreeing with you, Councilman Gordon. It would be awesome to do it. I just, I personally don't know where we where where we're going to cut it. I mean, we cut it now. We're just pushing things back. We're probably raising the levy for the next year, maybe two. I mean, I'd love to do it. I'm with you. What would the city engineer say about those streets being cut back? His, well, he's not I, here. I know they're not here, but I mean, I, do we table I did and ask him? Or? I did ask him, and he is, the one thing, he, he was on his way out the door, so he maybe didn't have the full discussion that he would have liked to have had with me, but his, his, his his advice was remind the council how much we spend maintaining those road projects currently. That, that Brookview and Sixth Avenue, these types of projects that have already been sitting out there for now a full seven to ten years, cost a lot of money. Um, and I think Josie, in her time with, with Public Works, the Public Services Director, can attest to that too. Is that as those projects get pushed out, pushed out, you end up you end up filling in um, potholes on the street and repairing more of our curb and gutter. And that does take time and money, and it and it's and it's it's not cheap. Um, and that kind of goes back to that analogy of if you don't know when you're going to have money for something, you start spending five thousand dollars repairing a truck. No one in their right mind would ever repair in their personal life. Um, and it ends up kind of being the same thing with with the street project. You push it out, push it out, push it out, and you incur those additional costs within the operating budget. Um, Mayor and Council, if I may, to add to that, when talking with our engineer, it also was looking at the optimal, what we can um, achieve for the success of the roads and having good roads without having additional costs. And when we push roads back too far, no longer will they be able to be maintained with a mill and overlay. Now you're doing a full reconstruct, which has a lot higher cost. Um, so we took those things into account as well. When we prioritized the streets, looked at what we need to do, made sure that um, <coughs> state funding was where we needed on the certain roads. Um, but a lot of it hinges between if we let it go too far, the road is no longer salvageable, for lack of a better word, and you'll have to do a full reconstruct, which is considerably more money. And I, and I apologize, Councilman Gordon, because I was in that conversation as well. And when he told me that, I was like, well, I, 
as much as I hate to do 3.8, I mean, I, it's better than 9.8, don't get me wrong. But. Well, I mean, I'm just looking at it more of a, you know, we didn't take any of that money before this. You know, it was just kind of a, if we had the money, then we did it. You know, But and, that's why we're carrying those bonds. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I understand, I understand that. But, I mean, I'm just saying we didn't take any of And I, I love the, the plan. I love the idea. I mean, I think it makes good sense, and it's, it's the right decision. But I'm looking for a compromise on... You know, I mean, property values are going up. We are collecting more taxes, whether we raise it or not. You know, we we never have pulled that money before in the past. You know, if we're we're talking about two hundred fifty-six thousand, I mean, what are we looking at there for a total? You know, we're looking at uh, over five hundred thousand dollars that we have not collected in the past that we probably should have. But I'm not saying I want to get rid of all of that or anything like that. I'm just saying let's cut one hundred and three thousand maybe from that to to keep it doable for this year for folks so and if we if we facetiously were speaking here mr becker and said hey let, let's cut let's cut 50 from the capital maintenance and and 53 from the street construction levy would that hinder us more I, than help us I, if we're going to go down that road and hypothetically speaking i would recommend the 103 500 which would get us to substantively zero on the tax rate it might still end up with a thousand percent or whatever over but um, I would just take it out of street construction. All of it? I would take all of it out of street construction. The reason being is this is much easier to reorder and reorganize um, a street reconstruction plan. Additionally, there are no purchases in 2020 or 2021, no projects in 2020 or 2021 that would be affected by that change. So we would have at least a little bit of time to, to think about how are we going to reorganize this sure. thing and make this work. If you do capital maintenance and replacement, we're talking about a laundry list of, you know, 47 items that now need to be reevaluated and reassessed, and that, well, that might be more difficult yeah. to come and to a consensus we, after the fact on right. which one of those is. And if we don't take from capital maintenance, then that money's still there. If we don't need to spend it, then we don't have to spend it. We can move it over to street construction. That's one option. So I mean, if, we, the, if we end up the, not needing it, then we could. Yeah, and the, okay. the intent for both of these is, I mean, you reevaluate every single year and say, here's where we thought we were going to be at the end of the year, here's where we actually ended up, and you adjust the levy each year a little bit at a time to recognize that, right? So if we have a project that's budgeted at 1.2 million in 2027, I think is a year that, I think that's the right number, um, and we come in at 1.1, we got $100,000, mm -hmm. right? Um, and let's say then we also, uh, I made assumptions on assessment amounts that were purposely low, and suddenly we find ourselves with $200,000 that we hadn't expected, um, you either start ticking that particular levy down and, and use that 200000 over time, or another option is just to pull it out and move it to, to fund 920. Okay. Yep. Those are, those so taking so it for street options. construction would be easier, <coughs> a I lot think easier. At, I okay. think, hypothetically speaking, at this moment mm -hmm. in this meeting, knowing we need to take action yeah, one way or another, um, that would be the way to go. And we're taking, and we're still, you know, we're still then collecting, you know, $154,000 that we wouldn't have set aside and wouldn't have collected. Yeah, I'd take it out of the street. I'd take it out of the 267, so you'd be at, yeah, um, you know, 164, I'll tell you what. 164, 163. So just in a nutshell here, if we took the 103000 out the 267000 that's going to set us down to 164. Hundred sixty-four thousand, yeah, right? Well, okay, yeah, we can, and we have two years to figure it out before we're potentially going to need that money. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. And we'll either figure it out by levying some additional amount in subsequent years, or uh, delaying the projects in order to gain that additional time, or That's finding good. it in savings in other places too, potentially, like we did with the health insurance this year, and like we did with combining uh, department heads for. For economic and community development. So. Well, those, those. I mean, be, be clear. Those types of savings, um, those would be in the general fund, okay, and we would you. want to be keeping that. That any savings we find there needs to be kept either in, you okay. know kept in that general fund levy and reducing that levy specifically, or okay. building up, continuing to build up that fund balance. Okay. So we wouldn't want to savings in in the general fund. We wouldn't want to to move. Okay. To fund 425. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll modify my motion. I modify my motion to accept the, the uh, budget with removing 103000 from the street construction levy. 
Can we make it 104? And then we would be, if we go 104, we're keeping the rate the same or, or actually lowering it a, a hair, right, at 104. If I'm remembering my math right, I did this a few days ago now, but uh, $103,500 gets us to within just a couple thousandths of a percent. So it's, it's, not, being, it's, a, it's, it's a zero, it's the it, same. It, I have a hard time imagining anyone could ever know the difference. Okay, so this, this just go 104,000 off okay. of it. So 104, we're for sure, we're actually technically lowering taxes. We're staying at, at basically the same exact rate. We're still setting aside money that we haven't set aside before. <laughs> And we can call that a compromise that I think everybody. And we have two money. years to figure we out where to. Two years to find that money that. But Mr. Gordon, I want you to think of this. We got to come up with that money in two years. Come up with it in two years. I, I, taxes are an increase. There's only three, two things that are certain in life: mm -hmm. death and taxes. And there ain't nothing we can do about either one of them. Right. Except we're doing the best we can, so the, the residents aren't getting hit hard. Right. So, but I mean, we do have to come up with that. It's going to have to figure it out somehow. Mm -hmm. But just remember yeah, that. And it, and it should have been come up with 10 years ago, and, and it should have been, we should have had 500000 more in the general fund besides, too. So maybe and that would have made all the yeah, difference right, in the world. Right. And yeah. that $1.8 million sitting over right. on yeah. Broadway. At least, at least this way, we're still setting money aside. We're keeping the tax rate the same. We're lowering it by just a, a smidge. And, and, you know, I think folks can understand that the property values are going up. We all want the property values to go up. Yeah, it means you're paying a little more taxes, but... When you sell a house too, it's going to be you're going to realize that that much more of an increase. So I mean, we want the property values to rise, but but at least if we can keep the tax rate the same and, and lower it by a smidge, then I'd, I would love that. So yeah, I'll second your motion there, Steve. So I have a motion to accept the budget as is, n minus 104,000 from a street construction levy. Yeah, I just want to clarify, the the budget that's here is not changed, even though we've agreed we're going to modify that plan. The council is never approving anything other than expenditures for the one year, just simply understanding the rest of the plan. So the budget as presented is okay. We would only be changing resolution J5, and that would be the reduction of the 104 on that one. I just want to make sure we're Correct. clear on the record. that yep. Correct. Okay. And we're going to take 104000 out of that. And I have a second by Councilman Gordon. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 4-0. Thanks for your hard work, Mr. Becker. It is yes, highly appreciated you. by myself and this council. Yeah, thank you, Mike and, and Josie. I mean, you guys, they did a great job. I mean, looking through that health insurance plan and cutting that, I mean, this is, they, they do an excellent job there at the city and, and uh, we sure appreciate the work that you guys do and, and, and all of you guys at the city do an awesome job. So. Thank you. And, if, and if, uh, if you come across any residents that want to talk budget, Send him Mike's way. He'll Mike bore you for two hours. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to item J8, the joint powers agreement. Ms. Wood or Mr. Lundin, who would like to take and run with this? I think I would be have to be me. All right. Um, so after all this deliberation with our fire district board, some of you, uh, Mr. Burgley is aware of how fun that thing has been for years. Um, a lot of this is brought on by distrust from previous times. So what they did is the fire district, which we, they've been doing for years, as long as I've been on the fire department. And I was on the department since 1981, I think, for until 92, 93 or whatever. Always build for fire calls and people have been you know, always paid it. But now we had an issue with a township fire that happened a, a little, not quite a year ago with that kennel fire where these dogs were killed and guys thing burned and whatever. And he doesn't want to pay his bill $10,000. So by doing what we're doing with this, the, uh, the board, this agreement, is allowing the fire district to bill for their calls, okay? Gives them a legal stance on collecting money due to them. This has in no way changes any of the board's functions. It has nothing to do basically with the board other than that we are agreeing to allow them to do this. This has been going on 
this original draft was sent to the city, I think three months ago. And it was gone over by our attorney and he said, hey, everything looks great except for, uh, you know, this statue is wrong. So brought that to their attention. Okay, they changed the statue number. Then the board decided they did not, they wanted more than three to be a quorum. So if there's no more than three out of the seven entities, if there's, if there's less than, th if there was three people, then we could, they could have voted on normal operating business. We aren't changing that, we, everything has to be unanimously voted. But one of the other board members wants it to be five instead of three. So we agreed, if this is gonna get this done, I agree to that. So we did, this is the new upgraded version of our joint powers agreement. They removed, like Mayor Johnson had said, they removed a bunch of things that were redundant and stacked on top of each other and stacked on top of each other. They cleaned up a lot of that verbiage and lettering, wording, and it is uh, gone to a, you know, it, the next fire district meeting, we want to vote on it. And I think at this point it will pass. And if it does, we want to be able to have this thing signed, sealed, and delivered immediately. And if we agree upon this tonight, if we vote to sign this, it'll be there the next fire district meeting. And it uh, will be good to go as far as the city's concerned. And I can step in and say that not only Councilman Lundin, but I have read this thing verbatim. Uh, our attorney has. Uh, I believe Ms. Woods even read this verbatim. And none of us have found any argument. Uh, all of us are behind it. We say uh, we pretty much gave him a thumbs up and said get her done. So uh, all we're looking for is the council to um, to pass this so we can push forward with the fire district and have the rest of the townships go forward as well and and get it done and over with is is our hopes yeah I think it's it's definitely something that's needed and I'm gonna abstain from this vote just just because I may have kind of a sort of a personal interest in that a little bit you know and that uh, but but yeah, I totally agree. It's something that we need to... And he can abstain because he is on the fire department. Is that correct, Ms. Wood? He can abstain, but I believe that um, you well, don't have a personal gain in it, but even though I mean, you work there, it's, it's, I believe it's your problem. choice. You know, I don't know. There, it's not don't technically to. a conflict. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll make a motion to, to approve it then, if I don't have to. Yeah, this is long overdue. I'll second yeah. So I have a motion by Councilman, Councilman Gordon to approve this. And a second by Councilman Burgley. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 4 0. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent second. agenda. I have a motion by Councilman Lundin to approve the co uh, consent agenda, and a second by Councilman Burgley. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion to adjourn. Motion, no. motion carries we 4 can't. 0. Uh, at this time, we Close need meeting. to go into a closed session. Oh. Um, we're going to ask everybody in the audience if they could step out in the hallway. We'll be closing uh, the meeting persistent to Minnesota statute 13.D.05 uh, subdivision 3A to evaluate the performance of our city administrator. And then we'll give you a, a brief description when you enter back in, folks. <laughs>